Today, I'm going to explain various types of potentiometers used in electronics projects and electronic devices, and I'm going to show several examples where these potentiometers are used. But first, subscribe to the channel to learn more about electronics because I publish new videos every week. Here I have the three most common types of potentiometers and each of them come in a variety of models. We have this one, which is the most common one, a 270 degree rotatable potentiometer. When I turn it, it has a maximum and a minimum physical limit. And I can use this to control the volume and intensities in the equipment. These types of potentiometers come in several types. I have this one that you grab and turn. This one, it's the same type, but we push the wheel with a finger. And then I have this little one, which needs a tool to rotate. You can't just rotate by hand. We also have this type of potentiometer, which is a joystick. This potentiometer uses two potentiometers, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis which together allows you to move all around and sends the X and Y axis information to the controller. Then we have this third type of potentiometer, which is a linear sliding potentiometer in only one axis. It can be placed horizontally or vertically, and then you move it up or down to adjust the resistance with a minimum and a maximum, and it stays in the position you want. These are the three most common types of potentiometers that you can find in electronic equipment. Let's start with this potentiometer, which is the most common. It's a rotary potentiometer with a maximum and the minimum position, and this type of potentiometer is widely used in sound systems. Here we have an example of an audio speaker, and when I turn the volume potentiometer, I can set the volume intensity between the minimum and the maximum, or change other intensity options, very common in sound equipment. We can see the potentiometer applied on the soundboard of a sound system, and you can see that the potentiometers are very similar. And when I rotate the potentiometer, just like we rotated on the sound speaker, we change the resistance of the potentiometer that sends the intensity to the controller. So, this is how a rotary potentiometer works. It's very common in sound systems. We also have this shorter potentiometer, which you just have to drag with your finger to rotate, just like this. Typically used in small radios to tune radio frequencies. You only have to turn the circular mechanism and it slides precisely to tune the radio frequency. Or also in this case, control the volume intensity. Instead of turning a knob, I simply turn the mechanism with my finger, but it works in the same way as the other one. Now I have this type of potentiometer that comes in a module, which uses two potentiometers to send the x-axis and y-axis data. It is called a joystick potentiometer because it allows control in all directions through this knob, and it can determine where I tilt the knob. It can be very versatile for control in various projects. It is called a joystick because it is used in this type of gaming equipment. This gaming joystick also has a potentiometer inside, which when I tilt the controller, just like when I tilt the small potentiometer, it can go forwards or backwards. In the same way, if I tilt to the side, the potentiometer tilts to the side, so I can tilt in any direction. The double potentiometer that is inside this equipment can identify which way I am tilting the handle. That's why it's called a joystick potentiometer. And finally, we have this potentiometer. It is a single axis sliding potentiometer, which is normally used in sound systems, traditional for precise control of a sound equalization system. We have an example of this here. This system allows for audio equalization. There are various equalizer controls here and volume controls. Using these potentiometers, it allows you to precisely adjust the equalization of the sound on the system and also the volume. 
If I put it in the maximum position, I'm pushing the potentiometer to the maximum position. If I reduce it, I'm putting in a minimum position. And the potentiometer is exactly where I leave it. And when moving each of the potentiometers, the system identifies the intensity of the position I set. This type of sliding linear potentiometer can be placed horizontally or can be placed vertically. Either way you install it, it only works in one axis, with a minimum and a maximum resistance. These are several examples of potentiometers, both used in electronics projects and commercial products. We have this rotary potentiometer widely used in audio equipment to adjust the sound. We also have this rotary potentiometer, traditional used to tune radio stations or change the sound intensity on the devices. We have this one-axis sliding potentiometer, also widely used in sound systems, but can also be used for other equipment, normally mounted horizontally or vertically. And we have the joystick potentiometer, which uses two potentiometers with a spring. This potentiometer allows you to push a knob on 360 degrees and identify the direction on two axes and control a system in two dimensions. I hope you learned more about potentiometers and if you are interested in learning about electronic engineering, electronic components, sensors, resistors, transistors and much more, then subscribe to the channel because I publish new videos every week, like the video, so you can continue to follow this series about electronics.